you might like to uh, turn to the middle pages, and there are a couple of verses from that reading, verses 6 and 7 of Luke chapter 2, that we're particularly going to focus on for the next few minutes. Let me read those for us again. While they, that's Mary and Joseph, were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now Mary knew that she was going to have a baby because as we thought, the angel told her. And the angel said to Mary that the baby she was going to have was going to be a very special baby. Boys and girls, can any of you remember anything that the angel said to Mary about the son that she was going to have? Put your hand up if you think you can remember something that the angel said. Leah. He will be the son of God. Well done. Absolutely right. The angel said to Mary that the child she was going to have was going to be the son of God. Now, we know the Christmas story, or we think we know the Christmas story. It's very familiar to us, and yet it's possible kind of to hear it each year and lose sight of what an incredible thing was happening. You see, when Jesus was born as a tiny baby, the Son of God, the one through whom the whole world was made, the Son of God was being born as a human being. Think how small a newborn baby is. You, if you're an adult, you can hold the baby just in one arm. That's not recommended. The emergency pose like that, so you don't drop them, is what's recommended. But for Jesus became that small. Actually, Jesus became smaller even than that. If you can see the screen, have a look at this and tell me if you think you know what, is, what that photo, what that picture is showing. Put your hand up, boys and girls, if you think you might know what that is. So I am going to come to... Baby. Baby, absolutely right. Where is the baby, though? In the tummy, there's a baby in a mummy's tummy, absolutely tiny. Now, if you can, if you can make it out, there's a slightly dark section just there. So this is a scan. Thank you, Google Images. I've paid the royalties as normal. Uh, that is a baby aged about two weeks. Now, can I ask you, please, to take your service sheet and have a look at the verses and find the very last line of that, Luke 2, 6 to 7, room for them in the inn, and find the full stop after the inn. Okay, have you found that full stop? Jesus, when he was in Mary's tummy, was smaller than that full stop. Isn't that incredible that the Son of God, through whom the whole world was made, became smaller than a full stop? So Jesus became tiny, and Jesus became helpless. We read in our passage that Mary laid him in cloths, wrapped him in cloths, and placed him in a manger. Jesus couldn't do that for himself. He couldn't wrap himself in cloths. He couldn't put himself in the manger. No, he needed someone else to do that for him. The Son of God, through whom the whole world was made, became tiny, and he became helpless, and he became poor. Now, we tend to have nice nativity scenes like this one that all look sort of quite nice and glittery and clean. And we can get into the way of thinking that the stable or wherever it was must have been really quite a nice place to be. Almost certainly, it wasn't. At a church carol service not a very long time ago, uh, there was a, uh, a nativity scene and someone who is a farmer came in at the beginning of the carol service and laid some hay into the manger. And someone who is here but will remain nameless came to me at the end and said, Richard, whatever is that terrible smell? And it, well, it's a smell you have to like, I think, to appreciate the aroma of hay. But do we get the point? This was a really smelly and nasty and very, very poor place that Jesus was born into. He became tiny, and he became helpless, and he became poor. And I guess it, it begs the question, why? 
why did God send his son into the world in this way? You'll see a, a second verse on your order of service, uh, uh, but you might prefer actually to look at it on the screen. It's a very famous verse, uh, and it's a verse actually as a church family we know quite well. Boys and girls, can any of you tell me why we know this verse so well, particularly this year? So it's a very famous verse anyway, but as a church family, this year we've got to know this verse. Can anybody tell me why? Jasmine is smiling like she knows, Tom, you're too old. Absolutely right. We learned it at a holiday club. It was our verse of holiday club. It's from John chapter 3, verse 16. It says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not be lost but have eternal life. And we see from this verse that God loved the world. The reason God sent Jesus into the world was because he loves the world and he loves each person in it. That means that he loves you. God sent Jesus into this world as a tiny, helpless, poor baby because he loves you. I wonder if you know that deep in your heart. I wonder if you know that God loves you. And God sent Jesus into the world so that we can have eternal life. Eternal life means living knowing God as our Father and Jesus as our friend. It starts at the moment we put our trust in Jesus. So some of us here have had eternal life for many years. Some of us for a few months. Some of us haven't yet got to that point where we've put our trust in Jesus. But when we do so, well, we'll receive eternal life. And that's why God sent Jesus into the world, so that we can have eternal life. And he sent Jesus into the world so that we can believe in him. Or put another way, put our trust in him. The people who have that eternal life are the people who have put their trust in Jesus. So uh, Jesus became uh, tiny and helpless and poor because God loves us, he wants us to have eternal life, uh, and he wants us to put our trust in Jesus. So as we remember the birth of Jesus, God doesn't just want us to think, oh, this is so nice. This is so lovely. It's such a lovely story. I guess it is a nice story. It is a lovely story, but it is an amazing thing what God did for us in sending Jesus. And what God wants for each one of us is for us to have our trust in Jesus. Let me pray for us that that would be the case. Dear Lord God, thank you for sending your son Jesus into the world in this incredible way that we remember at Christmas time. We pray that you'll help us to understand more how amazing this is and that we would respond to your love for us by trusting you today and every day. Amen. We're going to sing again of the birth of Jesus and remember.